Hey everybody and welcome back. This is Mr. Arvitis with another coronavirus history lesson. This time it's a U.S. history lesson and look at this. We're on site in London and that's right. We're talking about the German Blitz of London. France has fallen and Britain is in for one heck of a ride. So what, when we left off last class, the Germans had taken over France uh, throughout the early summer of 1940 and the only country really left in the free world fighting the Nazis were the British. Remember the U.S. is, is a neutral power at this point in time. We have neutrality acts. We are going to lend Britain a series of weapons and money, and we will help fund some of these aircraft that are come up during the Blitz. But Hitler has his eyes set on Great Britain, and there's an operation called Operation Sea Lion, and that is the proposed invasion of the island of Great Britain. Now, this never actually happens, but a lot of that is going to be because of failed intelligence by the Germans. The German army also was not an amphibious army by nature. Remember, Germany is in Central Europe. It doesn't have that many coastal regions outside of the north, really none outside of the north. And so Germany's army was not built to do coastal invasions. This isn't like the U.S. Marine Corps, where we already had it built in, and that was kind of a battle strategy. So... From the beginning, this is kind of a, a backwards thing, it's almost like a fool's attempt by Hitler to kind of get into Britain. Now, with that being said, if they had had proper intelligence, they possibly could have done it. And so that's going to be something we talk about today. Now, the Blitz of Britain is, is really looked at as one of the most traumatic events of the war for the Allies because we get a constant terror bombing of cities like London and other manufacturing centers all throughout England. Now, this is not nearly you know as bad as I think sometimes we, we often look when we get to the end of the war. Uh, what the U.S. and what the British do to places like Dresden are far worse than what the Germans were able to pull off here. But this is the beginning of that civilian bombing, and that's really what makes World War II uh, what it was at the time. Now, Britain is going to be led by Winston Churchill. Let's understand, Winston Churchill is a very dynamic leader. This was a guy that a lot of people did not want in charge of England. And so, as he did take power, he took power amongst the worst times in British history. That's right. You know, the British army is failing. They're being surrounded. He has to help, you know, rally the evacuation at Dunkirk, Operation Dynamo. And even though that's a success, the British army has had a major military defeat in World War II. And it's one that they have not suffered in a long, long, long time in their history. Now, from the United States perspective, we're looking afar from this and we're saying, oh my God, the old powers are collapsing. What's going to happen to Britain? And so for the U.S., there's a lot of U.S. Soul, a lot of U.S. civilians who are very nervous about the happenings in Great Britain. Now, most of this stuff kind of goes by very, very slowly in, in that midsummer months. But Hitler is going to make sure that he puts the pressure on Britain right away. Now, the Luftwaffe, which Hermann Goring says can pacify the British, does not have the amount of planes needed to do it. Uh, they lost right around one-fourth to one-third of all their aircraft in the Battle of France. You combine that with losing aircraft in the Battle for Poland uh, and the other subsequent operations, and Germany's Luftwaffe is not operating at 100%. And that's one factor that is going to kind of play its role into this. The other factor is going to be just failed intelligence, failed coordination between the German Navy, the German Air Force, and, of course, the German Army. Uh, th these, these entities kind of argue with each other, they bicker with each other, and it creates a less-than-cohesive unit. Uh, so the initial bombings, okay, aren't going to take place in London. And that's usually a, a kind of something people always say, well, they just start bombing London. No. Originally, the Germans are going to be bombing airfields. They're going to be bombing naval crafts, harbors, and some, you know, rail transportation and military bases inside of Britain. And these bombings are extremely successful. And in fact, the Navy bombardment, the bombing of Britain's Navy was clearing out the English Channel. However, you got to remember, Adolf Hitler is an extremely impatient person. He is not one to, to fool around long, and he did not have the patience for this elongated bombing to, to go. And so, really, he wants to change it up, and he wants to bomb the manufacturing centers of Great Britain. Now, we talk about bombing manufacturing centers, that's obviously going to leave cities open to bombings. And I think that's something to kind of consider as we move forward, that these cities are going to be bombed. Now, Churchill is going to rally support all throughout Britain. He gives a series of speeches. And if you recall, during the fall of France, he gave that speech defiance. And, and if you saw the movie Darkest Hour, they have a good little acting part of that, you know, where he says, we'll fight on the beaches, the landing grounds, we'll fight in the cities and the streets. We'll defend our island, whatever the cost may be, right? Winston Churchill rallies his people, and he's going to give radio addresses all the time throughout the Blitz, and that's going to be something that gives the people hope. Uh, he'll get the king to also give radio addresses to give people hope, and hope is going to be something that Hitler can't measure, right? In the, the countries that have surrendered in the past in World War II to, to the Nazis have surrendered out of fear, right? They didn't want their societies to be destroyed. Think the Netherlands, think France, and so they surrendered. But the British are going to get this mentality, and it's a hard mentality to get, 
but they're going to get this mentality that we're going to fight to the last man, right? And that's what Churchill says. I'll, we'll fight to the last man, and, and he, he'll he be filmed, and he'll have a photo shot of him shooting Tommy guns and stuff like that and practicing his, his marksmanship in case Germans dare land on the beaches. They start to train a civilian defense corps to help defend in case of, an, of, of any type of invasion. And they have people enlisting for this defense corps as early as the minimum age, 16, 15 years old, and as high as 75, right? We have people of all ages who want to try and get into this. Now, 75-year-olds didn't serve, but they tried to enlist anyway. And so that's going to be some of the preparation that Britain is going to make. Now, how does it turn into the Blitz? Well, you get a German bombing run that's supposed to hit a strategic military base. It's nighttime. They kind of lose their way, and they don't want to return back with their bombs, so they just drop them. And now those bombs land in a... In a uh, a London suburb, and it, it killed about 12 people. And so Churchill, in response, is going to bomb three German cities uh, within the next 48 hours. And Hitler then is going to then use that as saying, look, Churchill's bombing our cities, we're going to bomb their cities, and then begins the terror bombing campaigns, uh, specifically with the Nazis. And they're going to launch massive amounts of daylight and nighttime raids. Now, the British Royal Air Force was lucky enough to escape from France, so they still did have a number of planes intact, but they're short on pilots. They don't have qualified pilots. And in fact, the average age of these pilots is in their low 20s. And the average flight time by the end of the Blitz, we're talking just hours on, on a plane before they're sent into the air. And so it, it's kind of crazy when you start thinking about this. And there's always that, that fun quote where we say, never have so many owed so much to so few. And those so few are these young airmen who literally will sleep in their airplanes and then get called up and then fly off. Uh, and, and these guys do a, tr a tremendous job uh, during this this uh, thing. So a couple of things that the British do to kind of get by. One, as the, as the bombs do fall, right, they do cause large amounts of fire and large amounts of destruction in London. And we'll get to the death tolls at the end of the video because they are staggering when we talk about the dead in London. Um, but this is going to destroy the infrastructure of the city. And Churchill really is going to try and make a point, and the British government should try and make a point. When the Germans start to bomb at night, they're going to light up areas of the city that have already been bombed. And so they're going to try and light up areas and get the Germans fooled to thinking they're bombing civilians when, in fact, they're bombing rubble. And this actually works for over three weeks. At one point, they set up a fake little area on a lake that gets bombed as well. And so the British are going to do this in virtually every city that's getting bombed during the Blitz. The other thing that they do is they're going to use PR to their advantage, okay? They're going to have pictures of all this stuff in newspapers. They're going to make sure that the newspapers roll. They're going to make sure that business continues. And there's a great picture that I'm ho hopefully will be up on here uh, in a second of, of a milkman, right, carrying milk to his people. There's a great story of a baker who his bakery gets destroyed in one of the fires, and he puts together his own brick oven and begins to bake bread, and he just gives it away. He can't sell it because people just didn't have money, and people were unemployed, obviously, but he gives it away. And that was the thing that Churchill preached. You have to live your life. You have to keep going. Now, these air battles are going to be fascinating to Americans. You're going to hear about them on the radio uh, by correspondents. And they're talking about all these different you know, battles in the sky. And it's almost romanticized. We do see a number of Americans, a couple of hundred, are going to come over and join the RAF, the Royal Air Force. And they're going to come fight in the Battle of London. Now, another big thing I think that's really kind of cool, St. Paul's, which you see in the background, right? St. Paul's Cathedral is, is going to not get hit. And, and in a lot of ways, this is going to be one of the things that the people of London look at and they say, this is God intervening in this. And they're going to look at this as salvation because they have a bomb that goes right in the courtyard and it doesn't explode. It's a blank, right? Um, the, uh, there's another great event where the palace, uh, a bomb goes off in the palace and, and blows up a little room. And you know, the king at the time, he was not injured in this. Um, or he wasn't, you know, injured badly, but it was there. And, he, and Churchill comes over there and says, "We're going to get the press to come take pictures." And the king's like, "All right, let's go change." He says, "No, no, 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 no. You're not going to go change. In fact, we're going to dirty you up a little bit more because we want the people to see that you're suffering just like they are." And that was a big problem in London. Was a lot of the poor people felt that their areas of the city were getting bombed while the wealthy people were escaping off in, into various enclaves. And so this showed, hey, the king is going through it. So can you. And that rallied again more and more support, right? That whole keep calm, carry on kind of thing that you see those little posters that people now use all the time for various reasons. Well, that started with, with propaganda by Winston Churchill. And so the Blitz of London is going to go on and on and on. And the Germans are going to suffer mightily. Don't think for a second that they're not getting planes shot down. We're talking over 2,000 German aircraft shot down. And, and when we talk about 2,000 German aircraft shot down, we're talking 3,000 German airmen who are going to be out of commission, either dead or prisoners of war. Remember, if they're shot down over England, it's a 100% probability that they are either going to be captured or killed. They're not escaping back to Germany. And those RAF pilots who get shot down, if they can survive getting shot down over England, guess what? 
They're going to be right back in a plane. And the plane that crashes, if they can guide it down to a safe kind of guided, glided crash, then guess what? Those parts are going to be refurbished and rebuilt. And that's what England does. It buys itself time. It buys itself time, which is the most important thing. And that's what Churchill kept saying. Time is of the essence. Time is the most important thing. It is the only thing that can keep Britain in this war. And Churchill is going to allude to the United States a number of times during the Blitz. Um, and in fact, in the speech defiance right before the Blitz, he even says, it might be up to the old world with all of its power and might to come to the rescue of the old. And that was a clear shot at America. And he's going to be pleading with FDR, we need planes, we need materials. And FDR is going to try and facilitate as much as he can. Uh, but honestly, he's kind of hamstrung by some of the neutrality uh, legislation that Congress has passed. Now, how does the Blitz actually end? Well, it's going to go on. And we talk about this. It goes on from July, right? And it keeps going. Now, the height of it is really like September and October. That's the height of the German Blitz. That's when they're doing daily bombing raids. But this thing really lasts for about six months, okay? Uh, about six months. And the problem the Germans had is the British did not surrender. And if they had kept bombing the Navy, if they had kept bombing airfields and kept bombing the, those military installations, the British might have had to consider surrendering. But because they switched to civilians, and the civilian population became, instead of afraid, enraged. You can't come over here and invade us. You're going to bomb us from the sky. And that created a kind of no surrender mentality for the British. And it's something Hitler did not count on. And in fact, the major missteps Hitler will have in World War II are largely because he does not count on civilian resistance. He does not count on the resistance of whole civilizations against him. And we'll see that when he invades Russia, which is a catastrophic failure for the Nazi army. You know, the, the Blitz of London is just a strategic failure. But the invasion of Russia, which is going to take place in a year, you know, by the end of it is going to cost Hitler everything. Because the Russians, like the British, are going to say, no, we will not. Line in the sand. We're going to fight to the last man. And that ultimately is going to be what stops the British. Now, when we talk about the grand totals, like the, the grand totals of, of everything that kind of happened during this, uh, we're talking thousands dead in London. Okay. Now, in terms of pilots, you know, the, the British Air Force doesn't lose as many pilots as you would think. Only right around 500. But what they do, they lose a lot of aircraft, but they replace a lot of aircraft. And the British pilots become very good by the end of this. And the Germans lose a lot of their seasoned veteran pilots. So the Luftwaffe is going to have to catch its breath. And the Luftwaffe is down to about 50% effectiveness by the end of the Blitz of London. And Hermann Goring is going to be one of the guys who says, we need to take a back seat. And that's when Hitler's going to get enraged by this and says, all right, well, Operation Sea Lion is canceled. Okay, and but then don't worry, Hitler is not one to sit idle. And so by the start of 1941, he thinks Britain is pacified. And so they'll continue to bomb Britain periodically. And of course, when the V1s and V2 rockets come out, they'll rocket attack Great Britain. But Hitler is going to spend the next six months or, or really five months planning the invasion of Russia in Operation Barbarossa. And ultimately, that's going to be the largest invasion in human history. And it's also going to be the downfall of the Third Reich. But I hope you enjoyed this lesson. I uh, Please make sure if you have any questions, leave comments. Guys, you can hit me up uh, for the assignment later on. But until next time, Mr. Arvidas.